Hello, if you're just joining us, where this is the second segment of our 2008 Yamaha R6 build. In this particular video, we're gonna show you how to do the piston install all the way up to the head install. Now, if you need a refresher, if you would check the description link in the section below and you can go back and review what we've already done. So, once you're up to speed and you're ready to install the pistons, we can get started. All right, guys, now that we've rearranged, let's go ahead and start building up our uh, connecting rods with our new pistons. The Weissco kit actually comes with new wrist pin, new wrist pin retainers. So all we have to keep up with is the direction that they're coming off. This, where it says Y1, needs to go to the magneto side of the crankshaft. So we just took that apart. This was number four. It was sitting here like this. That little dot indicates, of course, with the larger cutouts for the, uh, the valves being on this side. The smaller ones, where the dot is, indicates where the, the, the exhaust valves are. So, looking at our new Weissco pistons, it's going to orient like this. That's how it's going to go back together. So, go ahead and get one end of our circlip in. All right, when you're putting in these rings, it's important that you either let the, uh, the gap go up or straight down. And you want to bend them just as little as possible because they are kind of small. And if you bend them too much when you're putting them in, they won't have enough tension to really uh, go into their groove and hold the wrist pin in there like they should. You want to start by putting that first end in and then just work it around with your thumb very gently. Kind of give it a wiggle on either end just to make sure that she's in there. Go ahead and oil up the wrist pin. We'll get it started. Crankshaft is sitting this way. We want the Y to be going out. So it'll go like this. Now, all I have to do is get another uh, retention clip on this other end. There. One down, three to go. Before we actually put the uh, rings on the pistons, I want to go ahead and check the, uh, the ring gap. What you want to do is put your ring in, then use a the piston upside down to push it down in the bore about an inch. All right, we've got our top ring in, and what we're looking for is a range from 0.25 to 0.35 millimeters. All right, let's go to 0.27, see if that'll scoot in there. And it will, 0.3, just barely. So that top ring looks good. Next, let's pop in a uh, second ring Use a piston, go ahead and push it down. And according to Yamaha, they want to see in between 0.7 and 0.8 millimeters of clearance. But Weissco wants you to run it a little bit tighter. They want to see somewhere in between 0.4 and 0.5. There's our 0.4. 0.5 won't quite go. 0.45. So yeah, she's dead on. So basically that's the process. You need to keep your rings in the right cylinder location, one through four. Now one other note, when you're filing these, you wanna do it completely perpendicular to the ring itself. So don't do it at an angle like this or like this. You wanna do it on a flat surface. And when you get it filed down enough, you wanna take off those edges like this. So I'm gonna go through each cylinder the corresponding rings and do the same check for the top and the bottom ring. All right, let's talk about ring placement on the piston itself. So what we're looking for is your top ring and your second ring to be 180 degrees out. I typically put the, uh, the top ring toward the uh, exhaust. Your second ring is going to go right here. All right, your third ring is actually made up of three different rings. You've got the oil ring and then you've got the bottom of the top retainer. The old ring, I usually follow it back down 180 out from the second ring. And then I put the retentions about 45 degrees off axis from each end. So that being said, let's prep the rings and get them ready to go on. The only real prep you have to do is just take and put a light coat of oil just with your fingers on the top and the bottom all the way around. The old ring doesn't need any. All right, as far as getting the rings onto the piston, the bottom ring, it's not that difficult. You can actually, what I call, spiral it on there. 
the one thing you want to be sure of is that the ends of the rings actually butt together, which they do. All right, next, put on your first retention ring, and yes, you can spiral it on as well. You want to go ahead and do the bottom one first. Go about 45 degrees out, then walk it around. Like that. And next, you want to put the second retention ring on 45 degrees out and get it into the top section. That gets the oil ring in place. Next, the second ring. We want it 180 out from the end of that one. So we'll go like this. Now these, you don't want to spiral on. You don't want to twist it in any way. You want to use a set of ring pliers. And with this one, it's actually marked, has a little N, so that indicates the up. You want to open this just enough to get it over the piston. Do not want to stretch it like that. Then 180, get on our top ring. Now, I just need to do that four more times. All right, guys, before we put this together, let's talk about bearing sizing. If you did have to replace a connector rod or if you were replacing your crank because it was damaged, then you would have to size your bearings from scratch. First thing you want to note is the number that is stamped on the end of your crankshaft. So you want to write that down. With that information, when you're sizing just your connector rod bearings, it's the last four numbers that we read off, which was 1221 on my crankshaft. So what you would do is look on the ends of each one of your uh, connector rods, and there's going to be a number. In my case, it's 5H, 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 5H. So they're all the same. So it's going to be 5 minus 1 gives you a 4, which is a green. So the next number would be a 5 minus 2, which would be 3, which will give you a brown. As far as the sizing for the mains, you want to look on the back side of your engine on the lower half of the crankcase, and there can be as little as one number right here. Mine happens to be a five. What that tells me is it's the same across the board. All these different journal locations are a five. So we compare that over to our crank, which has a two. So for each one of these, it's going to be the same bearing. So it's going to be five minus the two minus another one. So that gives you or in my case, it gives me a two, which according to the chart, signifies a black bearing. All right, now that we know what size bearings to go in, we need to replace the nut and connector rod bolt on each one because those are one-time use only. Start with number one. Just a few taps and then it goes in. All right, let's get a piston put in. Ring compressors on there. Let's get a little bit of oil down into the bore. Looking at the top of your piston, you can see the cutouts. Plus, you can see the arrow that needs to go to the exhaust. We want to get them in there, maybe an inch or so down, or just where they're into the bore. And that's as far as they really need to go. All right, so we've got our pistons in and we've got our engine flipped back over upside down. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and uh, lay in our bearings. Be very careful tapping these in place. Want them even. Use some as assembly lube. Put it on each one of the bearings. Doesn't take a lot. And then we're going to place the, the crankshaft and then go ahead and do the connector rod bearings. Let's start with number one. Make sure we line up our uh, marking on the side where it said that 5H. This is a two-stage tightening sequence. First stage, we're going to use a torque wrench to take them to um, 11 foot-pounds. Second stage, we're going to use an angle meter and take it in between 175 and 185 degrees. All right, only have to do that four more times. Next, let's go ahead and get what they call the drive axle put in place. And when you're setting it in, go ahead and replace this outer seal slides on get your shift forks lined up there we go all right so let's get our dowels in place there's one here here and then back over here all right I do want to put a little dab of assembly lube 
on each one of these journals. Let's go ahead and hang our uh, timing chain in place. And so what we're going to do next is go ahead and uh, lay some uh, adhesive and then I think we can get the, uh, the bottom end bolted back together. It doesn't take a lot, just a little thin layer or bead rather. You want to make very sure you don't put too much, especially through here because that's an oil channel and you do not want to stop it up. We can go ahead and set her in place. All right, well, she is down. Let's start putting our bolts in. Most of them I'm gonna reuse. The ones that I am gonna replace are the ones that uh, follow the, uh, the crankshaft itself. So just put a little bit of oil on your threads and drop them in. And we're gonna just put them all down, just finger tight to begin with. So we get them all in place. And then there's a tightening sequence we have to go through. Fortunately, Yamaha has embossed all of the bolts are the number that indicates the sequence as to how they're tightened down. All right, these funky looking ones like here with the shoulders, those actually go where the dowels are. All right guys, about to start this, uh, the tightening sequence. We're gonna start with these uh, 12 millimeter bolts that go in line with the crankshaft. All right, the first time we go through, we take all of these to 14 foot pounds. The next sequence, we actually loosen them up one at a time, and then bring it back to 8.9. After that point, we go through the third stage, which is actually to take them to in between 45 and 55 degrees. Then you go back and go through the same sequence again and take it another 75 to 85 degrees. All right, those other two 12 millimeters over here on the output shaft, you just take each one to uh, 17 foot-pounds. Now for the remainder of all those 10 millimeter head bolts, those get a whopping 7.2. All right, 28 is actually part of the, uh, the oil pump, so we're gonna skip over it, go to number 29. And now, well, she is uh, torqued all the way down. Let's rotate it up a little bit, put it at an angle. Well, sure. Not sure. Holes out. Collar. We can get our bearing in there. Let's get our clutch basket back in. Take our oil pump. Get our chain over there. There's a guide that this chain has to ride in. All right. See, I missed, so I slid out the. Uh, clutch basket just a tick. We'll see if we can't get that chain to come around and get in the groove. Yep, now we're in there. All right, with that done, you slide it over into position. And here's where you put in the dowels. Our elusive number 28. <laughs> Don't forget your oil pipe. Take them to that magical uh, seven foot pounds. All right, a little bit of Loctite, these two Allens. All right, and our pickup. Yes, get in place. Let's go ahead and get that oil pan on. Just a bunch of uh, five millimeter Allens. All the way around the perimeter, don't forget that one in the, uh, the center section there. All right, that's feeling pretty good, guys. Let's bring that T back around one more time. All right, that should be top dead center, just for the cases where the halves meet, and then that T and that line should be going dead into it. All right, let's go ahead and get our chain guides in place. Let's go ahead and get our dowels in. Do one last check, make sure all your surfaces are clean. Now let's get out our head gasket. And if you did do a 636 kit, do not use the stock gasket because it's not big enough. So Weissco will show you the correct one. And last check of the head, <laughs> don't let your tappets fall out. Everything looks good. Let's close her up.
All right, let's get some bolts on there and get her torqued down.